Uh, let's stand for the pledge. Pledge like allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Board Member Drake? Here. Board Member Nysel? Board Member Steen? Here. Board Member Van Blarkham? Present. Supervisor DeSclefani? Here. Welcome, everybody. Uh, make a motion to approve last month's minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. April. This month, we're looking on grants towards our Conservation Advisory Council Food Scraps Collection Program again. Uh, we're joining it with our recycling. We're looking for grants for our comprehensive plan update. And tonight we'll have a budget presentation by the Ontario Essential Schools. Monica LeClaire will make the presentation. Um, we've received about $120,000 grant from AWSMP for the Pine Hill LFA. We're applying for another 6,500 for some added engineering on a bridge on Bonneview. This summer the town will be replacing a bridge on Bonneview and the county's gonna be replacing another one just above that. Later this month, with the grant from the partners from the Shokan Watershed Stream Management Program, they'll be sending Donna Lemoyne, our code officer, Kevin, Eric, and myself to a, a flood seminar in Syracuse. Our next meeting is May 1st. Our supervisor's report. Justice fees, $5,167. Sales tax, $48,686.52. Lease direct, $14. Ambulance fees, $13,776.21. Town clerk fees, Easy Pass, $95. Franchise fees, $20,061.93. Zoning fees, $775. Building permit fees, $6,975. Dog licenses, $68. P police fees, $90. Um, rental for the medical facility is $650. Registrar, $288. Ambulance donation, $700. AWSMP reimbursement, $847.50. SBA tower rentals, $1,381.34. STR receivables, $2,505.22. Reimbursement for community loan, $31,875 for a grand total of $96,647.16. Communications, Joyce? Yep. Or did you so this to... Friday, April 7th, is the grand opening of Wellness Rx on Main Street, Venetia, the old Key Bank building. The ribbon cutting will be 11 a.m. All are invited. Be sure and show up. <laughs> hey, we really need this in this town. Uh, Venetia Playhouse has uh, movie nights on April 14th and 15th at their theater. The Conservation Advisory Committee, Council, sorry, and the Pine Hill Community Center are hosting free composting classes on April 17th and May 9th. Uh, I wrote it, scribbled it, so. Sunday, April 23rd, we're celebrating and appreciating Reverend Ralph Darmstadt at a little get together at the Memorial United Methodist Church uh, up here in Shandaken, and that's going to be from 10.30 to noon. Uh, you can learn CPR with Patty Rudge at the Phoenicia Library on Wednesday, April 12th. You will need an appointment for that. There's going to be a job fair at the Emerson uh, Thursday, April 13th from 10 to 4. The Computer Fixer Guy is at the Phoenicia Library on Saturday, April 15th uh, by appointment only. And yes, the DMV bus will be here this Friday, even though it's Good Friday and school's closed, they would normally not come but I called the county building. And they said yes, they'll be here 10 to 1, 2 to 3. So there you go. Thank you, Joyce. Oh, that's right. Of April. It was on the page. It is on the website. So folks, all this stuff's on our website, shandaken.us, and of course on our Facebook. But those of you who don't like Facebook, you can go on the website. Thanks, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go with Monica. Um, 
Testing, testing. Okay, it's to work a little bit. Actually, I was gonna say, if it's okay with you, I'll just hold it. I find that a little easier. Um, so you all have a copy of the presentation in front of you. Um, if those of you in the audience want to follow, there's some more up here if you don't have it. Um, So my name is Monica LeClaire. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Business. And my sidekick this evening <laughs> is Cindy Bishop, who is the Vice President of the Antura School Board. Um, so for the 23-24 school year, we're looking um, at a budget. So for currently, we have a budget of $59,991,639. So for 23-24, we're looking at a budget of about $61,208,650 for an increase of a little over $1.4 million or 2.38%. We are also looking to have two separate propositions on the ballot this year. One proposition will allow us to utilize the $8.8 .8 million that we currently have in a reserve to um, do some capital work um, at the high school and also at um, Bennett. And then another proposition would allow us to create a new capital reserve so that we can start saving money uh, for the long-term plan that we're currently undertaking. And that one we're looking to fund up to $10 million for up to 10 years. So I know the thing that you guys are most interested in is the levy. So our current levy sits at $46,101,388. Uh, the maximum levy that we could have um, imposed was $47,892,141. Now that's the tax levy that would have um, met the tax cap provisions of the, uh, of the governor, um, and that would have been a 3.88%. However, um, we ha the board has had asked me, and I was able to comply, um, of doing a tax levy proposing a tax levy at 2%. So a 2% tax levy would be the $47,023,416, uh, as I said, an increase of a little over 900,000, um, 2% over this year. So historically, um, the, if you, you can see what the levies has been district-wide. Um, our levies have pretty much followed the 2%, the ones that are under. Remember, the tax cap follows a um, lesser of uh, CPI or 2% as one of the formulas. So there really is no such thing as a 2% tax cap. Very rarely is it ever 2%. Um, it's just kind of a number that the governor threw out and you know, he makes the rest of us have to try to explain what it really is. So, but we have, you know, historically been trying to keep within that and, and you know, be very mindful of the, of the increases. Um, the next slide is specific to the town of Shandaken. Um, so I did this for all of the towns, and it kind of goes, shows the historical assessments and tax rates in the town itself. So the town of Shandaken, um, you know, represents one of five towns that Antura has in its district. And unfortunately, what happens is, is, every town, um, not every town reassesses. So every, every town is then given an equalization rate if the Office of Real Property comes down and says what you're assessing the home, these homes at is not their fair market value. Um, Shandaken has historically always had an equalization rate. I don't know when you've done an assessment, if ever. Nobody can remember. No one can remember. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> as you can see, it's ranged from um, 25.4 percent down to currently it's 18.5 percent so basically what that is telling you is that the homes that the the dollar amount that shows up on the tax bill as the assessed value is actually nine, uh, 82 percent below the fair market value so you can kind of see based on the equalization rate that the actual assessment change for the town has kind of gone up and down oddly, and that's because of the way other towns have had their equalization rates. Um, 22, 23 being the highest increase, I'm sure you're not surprised. The pandemic has driven home prices in mostly Shandaken and Woodstock, then Hurley, and Olive is the only one that's at 100% assessment. So it's, it's definitely made my job more interesting 
But what I do want to kind of point out at the, um, in the last column is the tax rate change. Even though you're seeing higher assessment changes, your tax rates are not going up by the same percentage as the tax levy. And that's something that's kind of difficult to, to explain to a lot of people. When we talk about the tax levy, that's the total amount of taxes that the school district can collect. And then what happens is we spread it out over all the towns and all the properties that make up the Ontario Central School District. And depending on each town's equalization rate is how much they pick up of the overall levy. So while one town, um, Wood Woodstock actually saw the largest increase for 22-23. They had the largest um, increase in values and they saw the largest increase in taxes. They actually saw about a 5% increase. Wow. Yeah. Um, and Olive actually saw a decrease because they had, they're at 100% assessment. So their assessments match their fair market value so that's why their rate is a little lower. So it's, 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 an, interesting, it's an interesting dynamic, um, made difficult the more towns you have in your school. Um, many school districts only have two or three. Um, there are a fair number in New York State that have like nine or 10. So <laughs> it, it just definitely makes it interesting. Um, so if you look at the budget breakdown, uh, this, is, this is fairly, I mean, it is, it is very normal. This is what you see. You see instruction and benefits make up the majority of a school district budget. Um, we are people driven for a reason, you know, we're there to teach the kids. We're there to, you know, make, help them succeed and give them what they need to, to become, uh, become good little adults. Um, we all, uh, transportation is also relatively uh, high for us. Adults. Good little adults. <laughs> <laughs> Transportation is also a large percentage of our budget because obviously we are a very large district. I don't have to tell you guys that. Only took me half an hour from West Hurley. <laughs> People laugh when I tell them like, it's like, well, you know, do, do, do you mind commuting? I'm like, it takes me a half an hour to get from one end of my school district to the other end of my school district. I don't mind commuting. Um, so another important part of a budget is the three-part budget, and really what this is shows you is that um, majority of our, uh, of our budget goes to program, and that's kind of what you want, what you hope to see, you know. Um, capital being another, obviously we have to keep our buildings up and running, and then administrative, that would be me. So some of the things that our budget's going to include we are looking to fund, um, or we're looking to do a, a transfer to capital. So what that is, we keep money within the budget that we then transfer to capital. And the, uh, the plan for next year is to use that money to support integrating the sixth grade into the middle school. So as many of you may know, may not know, the board did vote to move sixth grade to the middle school starting in the 2024 school year. So in order to make that transition as seamless as possible, we've set aside money to help um, improve any infrastructure, any changing in classrooms that we need to do, any sort of um, updates to um, the building. Um, in addition to that, the $8.8 .8 million that I was talking about earlier, we are looking to um, continue a work. We have, we've started um, to phase the renovation project in our high school to kind of bring it more up to up to modern requirements and things. So we're up to phase three. This summer, phase two is happening. Um, next summer will be phase one, I mean, sorry, phase three, if this, this is approved. So phase three will uh, it upgrade our um, family and consumer science room, um, and in addition to a lot of the other classrooms. We also need to do some electric improvements in the high school. Um, unfortunately, we're running out of breakers. Um, and then, of course, Ro roof work always has to be done when you have as many roofs as we have. Uh, the other thing we're looking to do is um, adding a canopy uh, over the loading dock. For those of you that have been to the high school, you know, the students enter, if they get dropped off, they kind of enter through the loading dock. And we've noticed if kids get there before school's open and it's kind of raining, it's kind of miserable. So we thought it'd be nice if we could try to put a, a canopy over there. And then also the one thing the pandemic has kind of showed us is that we actually enjoy being outside. So we're looking to expand outdoor uh, cafeteria options for our kids and by doing maybe a canopy or a nice something more permanent. Unfortunately, the structures we have now are just tents and with the high winds, it's, it's, not, it's not a good idea long term. So this is more of a long term solution to that. Um, we're also looking at additional middle school uh, learning spaces um, and also renovating the middle school gym, which uh, we re renovated the high school gym 
maybe a decade or so ago, uh, the middle school gym never got renovated, and if we're going to be moving the sixth graders up, uh, we think it's a, it's, it would be a good use of the money to renovate the gym for, for all of our middle school kids. Uh, as I mentioned, that would require voter approval, um, but it is at no additional cost to the taxpayers because that money has already been set aside. Yay. So, <laughs> so just um, a contingency budget. So if the budget does fail, um, we would, we, we would be allowed to submit a second budget. The, s the next budget vote would be held on June 20th. Um, we can either do the same budget, we can do a different budget, or the school district has the option of going straight to a contingency budget. If the budget goes down a second time, then the school district would re be required to go to a contingency budget. Uh, and then for those of you that don't know, what a contingency budget means these days is your tax levy cannot be any larger than it was the current year. So we would be looking at the same levy that we have this year, the 46,101,388, and because the proposed levy is the 47 million, we would need to cut approximately $920,000 from the budget. Um, in addition, uh, you cannot buy any equipment when you're on a contingency budget, so we already have about $485,000 in equipment. We are hoping to purchase some buses because our buses are getting old and you know they drive a lot of miles. So we hope that doesn't happen, um, the, the contingency budget, that is. Um, so the budget timeline. So on uh, April 17th, anyone that is interested, the petitions to run for the school board are due by 5 p.m. So on April 18th, the board will adopt the budget. Uh, and um, then May 2nd, we will hold our public hearing. That will be at the Woodstock Elementary School. And then on May 16th, we will have the budget vote and board of elections. So you can vote either at Bennett, uh, Phoenicia or Woodstock and you can vote you don't have to live in any town like you can live anywhere and vote in any of the buildings so if you happen to be in Woodstock but you live in Shandaken you can vote in Woodstock and vice versa so um, and then like I said if a budget revote is necessary that would be on June 20th and I believe that is it yes so the last page just has my email Victoria's email our phone numbers in case anyone has any questions and I, I put that out to the public as well we always appreciate um, hearing from you and any, you know, any questions you have, any you know, curiosities, please feel free to reach out to us. You know, we're, we're here for you. So, you, got any questions for us? Nope. Nope. We're good. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank well, you thank you much. again. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we'll go into committee reports. Ambulance. March 2023 report. Town of Shandaken Ambulance. Total calls received 42. Mutual aid given received zero. In a landmark moment in the history of the town's ambulance service, the Olympic Regional Development Authority, ORDA, has finally agreed to supplement the cost of providing responses to Bel Air Mountain. For many of the town's old timers, you may remember that this has been an ongoing conversation for decades. However, it never truly gained momentum despite the best efforts of both ambulance and town personnel. The ambulance service responded to Bel Air 66 times this season from November 2022 to present, with 31 calls occurring in January 2023 alone. Following research by Council Member Drake and Ambulance Administration, it was found that yearly subsidies and had historically been provided to all other ambulance services providing care to order for order facilities falling within their operating territory. After discussions with the president of ORDA, it was indicated that starting in 2023, the organization shall contribute yearly to the town of Shandaken ambulance service. Any contribution to defer costs to the taxpayer for the service that the ambulance provides is a huge help. And this conversation has indicated a desire, a desire to talk further about how to make sure the ambulance service is best capable to accommodate growth both at the ski center and for local needs. Many thanks to the order board as their decision to finally provide this long awaited subsidy will provide relief to the cost of providing the level of care expected at Bel Air by our responders. And lastly, but certainly not least, this could not have been possible without the support of, of the town board. However, specifically council member Drake who res res resurrected the conversation and followed up in an official capacity to assure that this landmark mo moment could occur. 
Many thanks and onward and upward. Stay safe out there. Richard Muller, Lally, Chief of Department, Shandakin Ambulance. Good job, Robert. Grace, anything from building zoning? Okay. Police? I haven't okay. heard from Chad. No good, this is good news. Bro. Okay. Nobody here from that? Phoenicia Water or Pine Hill Water. Kyle Museum. Shandigan Historical Museum's report for March 2023. We've given 46 visitors the tour of our museum, sharing our fascinating history with them and creating an enthusiastic interest. Visitor Kathy Holden drove three and a half hours to learn more ancestry for her family. She was very pleased and will soon return. Lynn Miller is searching for info about her great-great-grandfather, John N.C. Kirsten. We received many requests from the ancestry files of our museum, including a search for a Mary Myers, who I believe is a distant cousin of mine. Samantha from the Ulster Savings Bank asked me if I could interview Calvin Smith. He'd like to share Phoenicia's Phoenicia history with us. I'm working on a good day for this. We also set up a display at the Ulster Savings Bank as the business of the month. Rafael Santiago from the Shandaken Inn came in for the tour. He wants to learn more Shandaken history for a special trivia night at the clubhouse. Pamela Martin came in. She has a poetry walk set up in Pine Hill. April is poetry month and the museum provided vintage pictures of the buildings along the poetry path as well as poems written in the 1900s by Merrill Blish, also of Pine Hill. Another project I'm working on is history display and booklet for the Big Indian slash Oliveria Fire Department. They are celebrating 75 years of community service and their ladies auxiliary is active now for 70 years. Our fire departments are run by volunteers and that takes a special soul to give that particular gift of service. They need more volunteers to join, so if you're interested, please join up with your local fire department. We still need a few more people and their historic properties to join our metal detecting hunt with our friends, the Nor'easters. This fundraiser will be great for the museum and the community. Generally, there are 50 participants who spend the weekend at our lodgings, eat in our restaurants and shops in our store, shop in our stores. With such a large number, we like to have 10 to 12 properties this, this way. They can scatter for the hunt, meaning each property will have a few of our metal hunters instead of all 50 on a single property. They spread out. Please give us a call and join the fun at 845-254-4460 or email shandakenmuseum at gmail.com. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, hang on one second. Oh. Vinny called and said I would see him sometime in April. Thank you. Our list has grown and we need his help. Blessings for a successful year for all of us. <laughs> Kathleen Myers, director and historian. Thank you again, Kyle. Thank you, <laughs> Kathleen. Recreation, Sam? Um, so we had a meeting after the winter months uh, last month in March, and the highway department's tasks that we had for the busy um, part have been submitted to Tara for getting that on schedule. Um, we also are hopeful, and I'm not sure that we're going to be able to, but the Ulster, there's the Ulster County Municipal Grant. Um, it's a matching grant, 50% of funds matched with also 25% of the um, in-kind donations, 
Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Oh, well, before we get into motions and resolutions, Monica, if you guys want to go, you can. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Boring town stuff. Anybody have? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Anyone have comments on resolutions? The, the Shandaken Septic Maintenance District, which was formed um, in 2019, 2020, it's about 53 homes going west of here, up Ruthenbeck Road, Rudy Frank Road, um, up Route 42 a little bit. Um, that those are the homes. And every three years we made a deal with CWC. The city gave us money earmarked just for that it's its own district to maintain that district and um, they came in they replaced about 25 of those septic systems they put some of them together formed you know that were on too small of a plot of land um, and every three four or five years they have to be inspected and then pumped so this is part of that process it hasn't been like four years so they're all going to get inspected and pumped and the money comes out of that district. The money comes out of, out of that district's money. No taxes are spent for this. So the $8,000 is to pay for the pumps. inspections? The inspection. The pump. This is just the inspector part of it. We have to, and I have in motion to put out to bid for the pump out people. And, uh, and they will coordinate together. I'm sorry? The money would go to the people who pump the septic system. And the inspector. The inspector part, is, that's an $8,000 fee, and we don't know, we have an idea of it until we get the bids and we won't know what the pump out will be. Right, right. Thank you. You're I'm gonna move on to motions and, oh, I'm sorry, Jan, public comment. I just wanted to say that uh, on the, um, Uh, resolution number 62 um, people have been meeting uh, from Phoenicia and Pine Hill for uh, over six months now and we've done a survey with over 90 people who've responded about what are the things that are most important to them about town improvements and the things we love about the town the things we want to see could be better and and probably not surprising but the issue of affordable housing was very high on the list, much higher than we expected. There was a whole set of things that people could be concerned about, and that one was really up there. So I'm really excited that we're gonna do some exploration of what's possible. Thanks. Anyone else? All right, I'm gonna take, uh, make a motion to take bids for a septic pumping company to pump and dispose septage for 60, 53 septic tanks in the Shandaken Septic Maintenance District, approximately 1,000 gallons each, coordinate with the town and CWC that will inspect each unit, identify with the needs excavating to access which need and access riser install, and separately bid the cost for installing each riser. Bids need to be received into the clerk's office by April 30th and will be awarded at the May 1st town board meeting. We reserve the right to refuse any and all bills, bids. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm gonna make a motion to request for qualifications, RFQ, or request for proposal for a planner or planning firm to assist with the Town of Shandigan Comprehensive Plan Update Committee. Offers and qualifications need to be in the clerk's office by April 30th. We, refuse to, we reserve the right to refuse any bids. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion to bid for a busing service for the Shandigan Summer Rec Camp 
a six-week program, generally three times per year possible. Start up at 8.30 a.m. in Mount Trumper, pick up in four to six locations on Route 28, delivery to Pine Hill Lake, return at 4 p.m. Again, we refuse the right to refuse any bids. Second. All in favor? Uh, make a motion to reduce foods in our waste stream for our Conservation Advisory Council to research and apply for a grant to develop a food scrap recycling program. Operational days and times, the Town Recycling Center is open. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a motion to receive bids to sand and refinish the meeting room hall floor of 1,100 square feet. And we reserve the right to refuse any and all bids. Do you think it needs it? <laughs> it probably was done when we were. I uh, support it. <laughs> when we did the last reval. Who second? Uh, any seconds? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let's go into resolutions. Resolution 6123, resolution to pay all bills. Whereas the Department of Audit and Control require town boards to sign and inspect all vouchers coming to the town for payment to number and total amounts from each fund. Therefore, be it resolved, the town board authorize the following vouchers paid. General, $291,684.33. Highway, $156,816.54. Phoenicia Water, $49,415.19. Pine Hill Water, $53,369.83. Phoenicia Lights, $780.86. Chichester Lights, $97.69. Pine Hill Lights, $468.31. Shandigan Septic Sewer Maintenance District, $196.50. Ambulance Donation, uh, $49.99 for a grand total of $552,879.24 and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Barkham? Yes. Supervisor Dushman? Yes. Resolution 62, resolution to join the Ulster County Housing Smart Communities Initiative, whereas the Town of Shandakin Town Board believes that the rising housing and rental costs and lack of diverse housing opportunities for all community members pose a significant challenge to the members of our community. And whereas affordable housing is defined as housing in which the occupant is paying no more than 30% of monthly or annual income for housing costs, including utilities. And whereas ensuring that there are affordable housing options for all community members is a key responsibility of elected officials of the town and a critical component of creating a healthy, sustainable, and prosperous community. Whereas rising housing and rental costs and lack of diverse housing opportunities for all community members is part due to the demand for housing far exceeding the supply of new affordable and workforce housing being developed in the community. And whereas a long-term commitment by the town to review and approve new affordable and workforce housing projects is a critical strategy for ensuring there are affordable housing options for all community members and whereas working towards housing solutions is a priority for the well-being of the local residents, the economy, the community sustainability, and whereas we believe that our response to housing challenges provides us with an opportunity to improve housing opportunities and community well-being for all community members and to build livable, affordable, housing, housing smart communities. It's hereby resolved that the town of Shandaken, in order to meet the local housing needs, adopts the following commitments as part of joining the Ulster County Housing Smart Communities Initiative. This commitment includes compelling the following six steps. One, join a program through municipal resolutions and begin engaging with the community to designate a housing smart community coordinator to serve as liaison between Ulster County and the municipality. Three, form a housing task force to designate an existing official housing related body of the town to serve as the group committed to the program. Four, register for participation in the program on the housing smart communities initiative website. 
five, establish a community outreach and educational campaign on the importance of developing a range of housing options. And six, begin implementing and prioritizing a set of housing smart actions included in the program. And I move its adoption. Second, and I guess a, a quick procedural question. So after this, we'll put out if there are any interested members. Yes, because we any need Any interested members of the community? Yeah, I was going to yeah. ask that oh, okay. to, yeah. to contact us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, second. Okay. Board Member Drake? Yeah. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarco? Yes. Supervisor DiStefano? Yes. And there we go. Uh, an invitation to any and all who wish to be a part of this committee. Uh, please contact Joyce or myself. Thank you. We'll, uh, in the next four weeks. Thanks. Uh, resolution 63, uh, resolution for inspection services for the Shandaken Septic Maintenance District. Whereas the town of Shandaken formed the septic septic, Shandaken Septic Maintenance District and intends to maintain and improve said septic systems. And whereas the town of Shandaken Town Board accepts the Catskill Watershed Corporation estimate dated March 15, 2023 to inspect the 53 septic systems in 2023. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Shandaken Town Board authorizes the supervisor to execute an agreement slash contract and coordinate with the Catskill Watershed Corporation to provide said inspection services for the Shandaken Septic Maintenance District in 2023 in an amount not to exceed $8,000 and moves its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarka? Yes. Supervisor DeStefani? Yes. Resolution number 64-23, Resolution Parish Field Park Manager. Whereas under section 20 of the town law, the town board shall designate all appointed officers and employees of the town. Therefore, be it resolved that Autumn Brookmeyer be appointed as member of, of the Shandaken Parks and Rec Committee and Manager of Parish Field, Phoenicia, and no compensation, and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Barkham? Yes. Supervisor DeStefani? Yes. Open public comment period. Hi everyone, really quickly. Um, Jan mentioned the PH2 group, which stands for Pine Hill and Phoenicia Revitalization Project. Um, like Jan mentioned, we talk about housing, but also culture, economic development, healthcare, you name it. Um, our next meeting is on April 18th, that's a Tuesday, at 5.30 p.m. at the Pine Hill Community Center. Um, we promise to keep it no later than 7 p.m. Um, please come back if you've been before. If you haven't, it's not too late to join. Uh, come chat about Shan Bacon with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dave Channon, I noticed that the uh, uh, on Broad Street Hollow, there's a lot of uh, cave-in on the side of the road. There's a lot of cones out. And um, just wondering if there's any updates on uh, the condition there or, or, you know, what's going on or any maybe timeline of when the repairs might happen. Because I notice on, on Creekside Road, there's a drastic collapse that it's pretty county, much... It's a county road. Yeah. Um, <coughs> And uh, the, um, the condition on Broad Street Hollow, I've always noticed those guardrails like sagging, but now they're like practically in the stream. It's very rapid uh, collapse there happening. So uh, if there's any updates on that, or I'd like to know about it. Thanks, Dave. Any, any, anything, Eric? <laughs> That's a quick response. <laughs> Folks, if you do ever see problems with uh, county or state highways, on the back of our cards, our handy dandy yellow cards, uh, Ulster County Highway, that would be uh, Big Indian on Rio Road, is County Road, you know, like, so this way call them directly. You know, another good time to call them is in the winter, because they don't know it's freezing up here sometimes. You know, roads could be icy and they won't know, right? You know, so things like that. So it's always good to have that number handy. And you can get to them just as quick as I can. You know, can't get a hold of me. You know, I don't want to always call. If other people call too, and say, "Oh, wow, this really be a big problem." Yeah. <laughs> the other update is on Have we heard anything about 214? State, yeah. 
I haven't heard anything yet. The uh, last year he told me they were going to do it, but that's the worst state road. But road. they always say that. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> yeah. Chris, uh, Christine, um, Christine Colley, who was, I believe, the DOT rep to the byway, indicated that it was on on the agenda for this summer, but. To, to, to be determined, well, like, Hill you're saying. Really yeah. 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 Don't hug that shoulder, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be aware of bicycles. <laughs> On a related note, I just I was going to ask whether at a future uh, board meeting we could talk about um, what's happening with the LFA in Pine Hill and maybe in other towns as well. Just it's sort of it's really heartening to hear things are happening and I know you're all working really hard on it. Right, but those two bridges know. up on Bonneview yeah. for now That's great. are going to are slated to be fixed this summer. But since we people don't know how hard you're working and what you're all doing, it would be really great to, maybe if it was posted <coughs> on the website like what's happening with these various uh, roads. Well, we're waiting then, for the, the rubber stamp to hit the yeah but even if it's in process just to know that something's happening would really be great and then you don't just have people grumbling you know they say okay well something's happening I hate that. the only time i post it is if there's a closure you know they're going to grumble and it's kind of well i just stop grumbling yeah i mean we all like for instance in, always, you know. in pine hill we all you know a lot of people Are were really people interested we have no, they're really interested in the LFA and it's yeah. finished and you have the report and then you think, okay, what's happening and now? They they so just report. some more communication about it I think would really be helpful and that's probably sure. true in other towns too. Sure. How much it'll cost. We can be more helpful when we know, okay, we've got, we're doing a grant application or we're at the survey stage, just so we can be supportive and also communicate with our neighbors about it. And so that way we can help you all do that part of your job and communicate. Yeah. Local flood analysis. Yeah, we have the whole page of the, on the website for the LFA and all that, all those meetings that they have down in Chopin. Yep. Last time there was an LFA presentation at a town board meeting, there was quite a bit of grumbling because <laughs> it went on for an hour. So. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Any other? So I, I have one thing that actually kind of piggybacks a little bit on the, the, sure, sure. the PH2 bit. Um, Jan, correct me if I'm off on any of this, but with a, a kind of a little bit of history, where that partially started was to look for either a New York Restore or a you know, downtown revitalization um, initiative uh, funding. Um, but the, the response from that was ultimately that we could have had approached them too soon, that our projects were not sufficiently mature, they weren't sufficiently shovel ready, that the communication and organization hadn't kind of gotten to the level where that those programs were, were kind of willing to, to fund them. And so we had, there was a bunch of conversations and um, some of the folks from the Department of State there kind of indicated, well, you really have to kind of lead into this and take a couple of years and kind of, of, of talk through some other entities. 
and part of that was or is potentially getting some technical assistance that allows you to get the drawings and get engineering and get some of those things that allow you to present a more matured grant application. And of course, technical assistance is also cost money in some cases. But in about two and a half, three months, uh, I believe, the state is putting out its consolidated funding application. So I believe twice a year, the state puts out its consolidated funding application, which is a set of grants that change year to year and, and, and segment to segment, but there's always different sets of funding, and you can apply to different aspects of these, and there's a number of them that are related to technical assistance. But even those applications are at least somewhat challenging to kind of take from beginning to end, and so a number of entities, a number of towns, will engage entities to kind of help them through that process. And there happens to be one relatively local to us called the Mark Project, who, if we are sort of willing, um, I believe would like to present uh, to us in, in May shortly on what they may be able to offer us as far as getting those technical assistance individuals here, hopefully gratis, um, and moving forward, as long as that's something we're, we're collectively amenable to. Haven't we this time before? Sound familiar? I don't, I don't think so, but al also with the MARC project and with this community's housing initiative, uh, there will be some technical help from them also on the housing aspect. Uh, I think we probably use as much as we can get. Did I yeah. miss anything particularly we salient? We certainly could, yeah. Oh, it's a sort of historic memory. Yeah, I think many, many, many years ago, I think the MARC project did a visioning project. I know in, in, the niche, in uh, Pine Hill. Uh, they've, they've always, they're very Delaware County oriented, but Shandaken is within their target area. And uh, Peg Ellsworth, who's the executive director, has uh, reached out to us and said she'd like to help us do this and uh, work with the town and work with PH2 to put in the application for getting some consultants to help with Venetia and Pine Hill, looking at their downtowns and thinking about things that could be done to rehab uh, commercial and residential downtown. And then, as Robert was saying, if once that work is done, you can then apply, owners can get, are available to get uh, grants for rehabilitation. Because some of these are very rich grants that could be oh. very useful. If you can get uh, the Main Street grants pay for 75% of the construction costs for rehabilitation of commercial and affordable housing. Uh, so that's quite a great deal and um, and this is something that Mark has been doing for 40 years. Yeah, and, and some are just for, for painting your... You, you can do that as yeah. well, yes. Yeah, which is a big plus. So it's a beginning of a, a process for us and then hopefully if we do these things then we're also more, Shendaken is more eligible for things like the downtown revitalization initiative and other bigger grants. Yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah, we're all for that. Um, I'd like to, at some point, uh, we had at the Conservation Advisory Council uh, somebody from the, a CCA, a Community Electric, uh, will have somebody give us a, a presentation. presentation yeah, cool. in next month or the month after. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah.
Thank you, Sam. Uh, there's no one else. Uh, I'd like to adjourn the meeting in the memory of Patty Ullman, Dakin Morehouse, and Henry Rope. Moment of silence, please. Thank you, everyone. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Happy spring. <laughs>